Alright, so, what's up guys? This is going to be like the second video of my Motoc build. Um, I wanted to get started on the front suspension here because I got jack control arm kits from Kinetic Vehicles up in Oregon. But uh, I needed to get some spindles to work with, which I had in the back and I pulled them out and got them all cleaned up and stuff. But uh, I was noticing that the, the steering arm on them is not angled the way I want it to be which I remember reading about on the forums a while back. So I, um, there's a couple options since the factory, um, uh, factory steering rack is located under the engine in the Miata, the steering, the, the, ta the, um, steering arms on the spindles are angled down and on the low cost, the steering rack is going to be almost in the center line of the wheels, if not in the center line, I haven't I haven't uh, looked it up yet or looked at how I'm going to place it yet, but it's going to be almost level with the center of the center of the center of the spindle. So the tie rods from the Miata are not going to work because of how they're angled. And um, I've seen people do a few things like using tie rods off of something else. I think it's like a Mazda 323 or something has straight tie rods but then you still have to deal with the the angle of the the steering arm which even if you bent that out um, you still have the, uh, the tapers backwards because the Miata tie rods mount from the bottom and not from the top so then you have to retaper it from the top so I don't really know how that works because you're gonna make the tapers larger Anyways, I think I'm just gonna go with the some um, some uh, time joints or something like that with a bolt. I think that'll work out just fine. But to do that, I had to um, bend the steering arms on the spindles so that they're flat. And uh, I was gonna do that with a torch and decided to record it. So first thing I did was get the uh, spindles out and clean them up, put them in the sandblaster, <coughs> take them apart because I didn't know, you know I'm going to get it really hot so I didn't know what the, um, all that heat was going to do to the bearings. Figured I'd just take it apart and that way I could clean it all, all the pieces separately anyways. And uh, well, also the brake backing plate is right by the um, steering arm so if you're going to get the steering arm that hot that backing plate's going to warp pretty bad. So you had to take it apart anyways, but uh, after it's taken apart and clean and stuff, we set it up in the vise and uh, get the torch going and heat it up. Took took a, a decent couple of minutes to get it get it going just because there's so much metal there to absorb all that heat, and then just take a big old crescent wrench and yank on it until it comes down into place and kind of makes the the faces of the steering arm as even or parallel as you can with the with the spindle itself so that they're level when you put it in the car. You have to let it air cool. You don't want to you don't want it to cool down too fast, so let it air cool for a few hours and then come back and do the next one. And then uh, clean it all up with a wire brush and throw some paint on them, put them back together, and uh, they're pretty much ready to start working with. I do have a couple of my wheel studs that were damaged t when I took the car apart and I don't know what that was from probably from the previous owner over torquing lug nuts but I'm gonna have to put new wheels a couple new wheel studs and I figure if I'm doing a couple new wheel studs I might as well do all new extended wheel studs so when I get a chance I'll take everything apart and put extended wheel studs in here but you know for now three out of four ain't bad I can work with that so now that I have the spindles um, cleaned up and stuff. I put one in one of the wheels right there. See the steering arms all fixed. Nice. And um, set the wheel where I wanted it, which is in line with the rear wheel. So I measured the distance between the bottoms of the rims when I had both rims on the back, and then cut the distance in half measured from the center line of the car out to the edge of the wheel and that got me my side to side placement and then 
front and rear placement was kind of determined by the control arm here with its length. I don't have two hands, so it's kind of hard to do this, but uh, basically the control arm kit that you get from Jack, this is how big it is, and I'm basically just using every inch of it I can. I'm not going to cut it down at all. And so that's going to give me the longest control arm I can get, which should get me the same track width as the rear. And so the wheel base is chosen based on that and kind of using this angle or the angle out from the front of the frame. So it's under 100 inch wheel base. I think it's like 97 or 8 inches. But uh, I think the original Lotus was like 70 something or 80 something I want to say. It was a lot smaller. But uh, as long as it's under 100, we should be good here. I mean, you can see it from the side. Looks pretty decent. All right, so a couple things have changed since we last saw it. Uh, the the uh, I cut this tube out so I could scoot the engine back a little bit. The back of the head is about right there with those two tubes. And then that leaves a little bit of room back there for some of the tubes that need to go behind the head. And I uh, made the X brace. It's a little bit further back than I've really seen anybody's builds. Obviously, I haven't looked at all of them, but uh, it puts the shifter in a good location. And I don't need to build a shift extension or anything like that. And um, also move these two tubes in because I had them going out like from the sorely plans because I didn't know what I was doing when I did it the first time. And then built the engine mounts and then made this X-brace that sits just in front of the oil pan. Uh, it looked like a good idea, so I put it in there. And then, uh, yeah, so we got the, the uh, kinetic suspension going. And then for the rear suspension, I've got these uh, shocks off a Raptor 660 quad that uh, worked out to be nice for the stock rear the stock rear subframe from the Miata. So I'll go into more detail when I actually end up installing those about those. Also did those two vertical tubes that were as close to the transmission as I could get. Doesn't look like a whole lot of foot room in there, but hopefully that'll work out. I'm hoping for the next the next episodes of this to be uh, working on the front suspension. I really want to get the front suspension done. And uh, so if you want to see those videos, uh, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.